You're listening to The Starting Zone, a podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. And now, here are your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to The Starting Zone, the podcast about World of Warcraft for people who play it. Today is April 19th, 2023, and my name is Spencer Downey. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by my co-host, Jason Lucas. Jason, how are you doing this fine Wednesday? Oh, Spencer, hello. I have been better, I'll tell you that much. Oh, no. <laughs> I've been, been a little ill recently, but uh, I'm feeling a little bit better today. Uh, so here we are. Um, yeah, I, I'm ready to go. You know, we're just powering through. Um, you know, we're in a really weird holding pattern waiting for 10.1, but that's okay. I mean, uh, I think it's probably, it's probably good to take our foot off the gas just a little bit here before we, we get right into a a new patch. So, you know, it it is, it's a bit of a slower news week overall. Hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, we're, we're in the lull, right? This is the calm before the storm of what's going to be kicking off in a week's time. So we have that, you know, last week, I guess, of 10.0.7. So it is what it is. We're about to get that 10.1 juicy mm-hmm. content stuff that's going to be happening. But before we dive into what's going on in World of Warcraft, I know that there's an update on the deal between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard. Yeah, some breaking news this morning mm-hmm. uh, in from the UK. I woke up to this uh, news. The Competition and Markets Authority has moved to block Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Uh, quote, over concerns a deal would alter the future of the fast-growing cloud gaming market, leading to reduced innovation and less choice for UK gamers over the years to come, end quote. And uh, Microsoft uh, pretty much immediately publicly stated that they plan to appeal the decision. So we'll see how that goes. This is kind of a surprise. I felt like sort of the press and the news coming out of the UK over the last few weeks, months, was sort of leaning in a, in a friendlier direction for, for Microsoft and for Activision Blizzard. But um, this is obviously a huge blow to the acquisition. And I mean, we've, we've talked about this a lot on the show over the last year and a half since the deal got announced. Um, th- it, there's a climate that might make this difficult. I mean, the price tag is kind of eye-popping for, for Activision Blizzard. But when you really look at the overall market picture, it's not, you know, it's hard to make a case that it's it's that highly anti-competitive in the overall gaming space. Um, But it seems like it was the right place, right time to make an example out of Activision Blizzard and to kind of slap Microsoft on the wrist for buying up so many companies over the last, you know, few years here. Um, so yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I think this portends like not good things for. I think I think the EU ruling is also expected pretty soon, and then I don't know about um, in the US. I mean, just a couple days ago, yesterday maybe, like there was some stuff going around the wire that like, you know, Activision Blizzard was preparing for the deal to close pretty soon. Um, mm. <laughs> I think that maybe that's not that's probably not happening. Um, but you know, we'll see. This is. This is one piece of the puzzle. There are a couple other pieces, I guess, and um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a big. It's going to be messy, I think. Um, the only reason why this is sort of distressing to me is a thing that you're seeing a lot is like Blizzard is bleeding game dev talent, and Activision are obviously not great corporate stewards for the company. Um, Activision Blizzard management is obviously like spearheading this forced return to office policy um, and making people who are comfortable working remote come into the office on some type of regular basis and forcing them to live like locally to the offices, etc. It's a competitive labor market. Companies that are willing to let people work remotely and be more flexible are going to have a leg up with recruiting. Blizzard's bread and butter over the last 20 years is live service games that need a lot of attention and a lot of, you know, creativity to keep the experience fresh and to, and to meet customer expectations. And I have legitimate concerns lately that Activision Blizzard management is going to put Blizzard's back against the wall in such a way that they really can't support their ongoing like live service games anymore in a, in a way that the customers expect. Um, and kind of my my hope 
in this situation would be that Microsoft would be a better corporate steward for the Blizzard Studios and let them kind of exist in their own space away from Activision and Activision's management and that maybe they'd be more amenable to things like remote work and, and things of that nature. Um, I think the, the longer that the people who've run Activision Blizzard corporate are forced to be the ones in charge of these game development studios, the more likely it is that the stuff that we like to play is going to start going downhill fast. Yeah. It's so hmm. I guess what you're getting at is that our expectation out of these companies is going to shift and get lower as far as what we should be, you know, expecting to get from them. If trends yeah. continue this way. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's reasonable when you look at, you know, just the, the kind of brain drain out of, out of blizzard uh, uh, as, Activision Blizzard management continues to tighten the screws and stuff. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like consolidating, you know, all of these these big companies is ultimately bad, but also in this particular situation, like, it's a relatively small slice of the pie when you look at the overall gaming space. Yeah. And also, Microsoft really can't be, like, a worse boss than Activision Blizzard has been, It's seemingly. So yeah. that's kind of where i where i sort of find myself with with this overall like overall i i really don't think that these companies should be acquiring each other and doing all of this kinds of stuff just broadly but you know i i i i'm not sure it doesn't this doesn't bode well for the future of of this acquisition and um i'm just not sure you know i I guess nobody's really sure how it's going to pan out but it does it does seem like if Blizzard can't get out from underneath Activision Blizzard, that I I, just, I don't think that that bodes well for the future of the games. Well, it, it's tr- it's tricky with this particular deal, right? Because I think their appeal has ground to stand on. When you see companies like Disney, for example, just acquiring everything they want and getting away with it and being able to do it, it's an odd thing to be like, oh, but Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard, this is the hill we're going to die on. This can't happen, right? It's hard to make that argument um, when you're seeing the other acquisitions that are happening. Even here, you know, in Canada, we have like Rogers, a, a large telecom company, just absorbing other telecom companies. And you're like, okay, well, Rogers had a very serious issue uh, recently where their network went down and people couldn't even call for help if they needed it in a lot of situations. And it was down for the majority of a day. And it's one of those cases of they didn't have the infrastructure to ensure that those critical services kept running, even if their network went down. Um, so them acquiring more networks just means, oh, great. So, you know, that could create more problems for more people. So it's that it's that case of when you're seeing these acquisition deals happen all around the world, it's tricky to, to look at the Microsoft Activision Blizzard one and go, this is the one that's not OK. We can't do this one. Right. So I, I feel like they right. have grounds for the appeal, which is the the problem in these situations with so many other companies getting away with doing it or, and and being allowed to do it uh whether that's through lobby power or whatever else it is going on uh it's it's a tricky situation to be in for regulators and for you know in this case uh the uk deciding hey this isn't in our best interest i don't know if that's going to hold up so we'll we'll see what happens with it but i'm with you that i don't think microsoft could be a worse you know <laughs> person to run activision blizzard than activision <laughs> blizzard was so you know i mean there's a part of me that thinks like there is no floor you know right. and who knows like that's a, maybe a dangerous <laughs> line of thinking that like it they could couldn't be. be worse but yeah. i mean uh, there is just so so much that we know about on the outside that's been publicized over the last almost two years that uh, like activision blizzard is obviously a, you, you know it's distasteful at best like yeah they are not you know they're not compliant with with labor law broadly yeah. you know it's just not it's it they yeah it's it's just um it's a bad situation and i i mean i just i hope that the devs who are you know working at blizzard and working on the games that we'd like to play are okay <laughs> i just you yeah. know i want them to have the opportunity to create and to make cool stuff and i want to i want to play it and i feel like their corporate management is not putting them in the best position to do that right now. Yeah, I don't think they are. Uh, it, it's it's tricky. Work from home is tricky because it's a lot of argument happening right now in the union that I'm currently in and my workplace and a lot of other workplaces where people feel like there's this risk of allowing people to work from home where well, how much work will they actually do? How productive will they actually be? And how could, is there any way we can limit or regulate or watch them 
to make sure they are completing the, the stuff that we need them to do. And so that's, you know, obviously different for every industry and every workplace, but when it comes down to it, mental health wise for some people, not everyone, some people, it's actually quite beneficial, right? You have people who work better inside a space surrounded by other creative individuals who are sharing ideas and meeting up and getting around a table. And you have people who shut down in those spaces who are actually very good at what they do, but they like their dark little corner that they can sit in and not socialize with individuals and just get their work done. And they can do that at home and feel much more comfortable and safe and be more productive in, you know, in the end. So it's, to me, important that you accommodate whatever works best for that individual. That's how I feel. But not all companies see it that way. Often a lot of companies see someone saying, I want to work from home as, hey, I want to find a way to just like get out of doing work. <laughs> right. So. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is sort of ableist, I think, to require like in office work when remote work is acceptable or suitable or possible. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it could it could just be a preference like like you kind of mentioned. It could be. You know, an accommodation issue, you know, people with with certain issues that require accommodation, like the workplace may not be as suited, may the, the work like facility may not be suited to accommodate them, whereas like they could easily perform the job functions, you know, in in their home or, you know, wherever they, they do have the appropriate accommodation. So um, it's just like it's just incongruous, like there's especially considering, you know, how long the studio was on full remote work and they were shipping games and uh, you know shipping actually some pretty good stuff uh, it's not like we, we you know we live in a world where remote tools are good and and networks are good and yeah when you work in a technology focused environment like there's no you know there's no hurdles in terms of actually performing the functions yeah yeah all right, we spent enough time not talking directly about the game of World of Warcraft, and I'm sure we'll hear about it from some people. So <laughs> I apologize to those people. We're jumping into World of Warcraft now. Jason, how was your past week in WoW? Uh, it was a light week, as you might imagine. Uh, we did do, uh, last night we did Achievements in Vault on Normal. Uh, that was fun. They, uh, I mean, I think Vault really is a good raid, and I think it, it certainly met my expectations and kind of my hopes for what the first raid of Dragonflight would be like um, in terms of, you know, overall like accessibility and, and everything like that. Like Vault has never felt like a chore to go back and, and revisit and re-clear or whatever. Um, the achievements were fine. They were all mostly pretty good. Uh, a lot of them are just kind of like, uh, do this thing before the fight or do this thing at a certain point in the fight and then you'll have like an extra ad and then you kill the ad and then you win the fight and get the achievement like not really a lot of wacky ones uh, maybe none of them are really wacky as i think about it dathia was the only one i really didn't like which sort of just it continues the theme of dathia being my least favorite boss of this raid like even her <laughs> achievement i didn't like because there's all these orbs scattered all over the room and you have to like collect them by being knocked up by the um the cyclone or you know the the knockback from the ads or you have to like jump off the edge um it took us a couple of times it's it's kind of hard to collect some of the orbs that are on the main platform because you have to get up like really high so you have to be like perfectly aligned with them to mm. to get it and there's like eight of them and you get a debuff once you've collected one so you can't have you can't just have your demon hunters just go get all eight of them and go okay we're done like just kill the boss um but other than that like actually the um the Diurna one was pretty cool because you had to uh, – the achievement is to get uh, one of each of the different elemental uh, proto-dragons hatched, and then you kill them all within 10 seconds of each other. So that was kind of interesting because uh, um, Diurna is a really structured kind of dance, even on normal. It's like there's a specific order you do stuff in, and then the fight is safe and, and easy to do, basically. And for this one, it's like, okay, well, here are these two eggs are adjacent that are different colors. And then over here, there's two other eggs that are adjacent that are the, the other two colors. So, you know, position her near them so she hatches those four right off the bat. And then, you know, you have to, at that point, now your route's all messed up, right? All the timing is now broken because you have hatched these eggs at, at different times. And, you know, now you are moving like, you have to move uh, 
to away from the boss, right? Because the, the boss has an aura that heals the ads. You have to kill the ads. And the achievement is literally to kill these, uh, you know, these ads that you hatch. So then it's like you're sort of improvising a bit more, which is uh, unique on that fight from my experience. So that was that was uh, maybe that was one of the better ones in there. But um, really, that's it. I mean, I think we're done with raiding for the rest of this week. I don't think we're going to do heroic uh, one last time. There was some talk that maybe we'll we'll raid next Wednesday, like let patch day kind of come and go and let stuff bake a little bit and then, and then try Wednesday raid with, yeah. you know, the class changes and stuff. So that's, that's probably what we'll do. Um, that's a good I didn't call. do a keystone last week at all. That was the first time this season I didn't do one. And I don't think, I don't know if I'll do one this week either. Um, I think my goal is probably in that preseason week to try to do like the highest key I can find in the, uh, you know, out there somewhere, maybe just see if I could like plug into a 21 or something Right. shadow moon and just like get the highest key i can although um the as we were as we were sort of spinning up here to, to go on air um we did get some news that uh ian has a coast has confirmed that going from season one to season two your keystone is going to decay by 10 levels oh man. uh so mm -hmm. i think man a negative uh, that, keystone sort of... can you imagine receiving a negative keystone <laughs> <laughs> Everything well, is like it, sub substantially easier. You get Shadowlands yeah. gear at the end of the dungeon as a reward. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it sets it to time walking. Yeah. Um, That's right. <laughs> it's, yeah. You set the dungeon to time walking by putting the keystone. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I guess it doesn't decay below two, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that might change w my priorities in terms of like, what's the, okay, if I get, if I, if I do a key. If I, if I can get a 20 or a 21 in the week before the reset, then I end up with a 10 or an 11 versus if I don't do anything, I end up with like a 7. I mean, we're right. going to have to push keys back up. So, um, you know, it's just uh, I really haven't really been playing much WoW outside of that, like outside of guild stuff that's on the schedule. I just I've just been so busy and just so fried. Like I just even when I do have time, which is rare, I don't have energy to get in and do WoW stuff, which sucks, but it just is what it is. Like I I mean, real life has to take priority, uh, of course. Um, the only thing that sucks is, like, I'm not sure how much of that is really going to change by next week. I, I don't expect that, like, next week the switch is going to flip and stuff is going to chill out for me and I can really just, like, dive into 10.1. I think I'm just going to be, you know, kind of nibbling on the edges of it and hoping I can squeeze some time in to get what I need out of it, um, which sucks because I want to just be excited and, and dive in, but I... I just, I can't, I'm, I'm, my life is not accommodating that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I understand obviously taking a little bit of a break before you kick off into new content. It's always good to sort of have some recharge and take some time away to be able to do that. Uh, I did play a bit of while last week, earlier in the week, uh, did some myth mythic plus. Um, so I did in fact get a vault reward, which felt good to get a vault reward. I always like getting vault rewards. Uh, although when I was playing the game really regularly, it got really boring to get vault rewards. <laughs> So, you know, it's different. You don't play the game as much and you get more surprise and you enjoy the moments a little bit right. more. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I, I had a good time with that. I didn't really get a lot more done as far as questing and whatnot goes because I'd pretty much wrapped a lot of that up. But I worked on reputations and I'm still finding little things here and there that I, I'm sort of picking up and, and cluing into on the game that I'm enjoying. Um, but yeah, I only really got to play the first couple of days of the week and then wasn't able to play very much for the rest of the week. Um, so I did, uh, uh, Halls of Valor, which was brutal. Um, just like first chunk of it went really, really smooth. And we got to the last boss and you start having issues with the person not activating the shield at the right time. So everyone just got, you know, wrecked by the boss before you could actually get behind the shield because the shield would be going away mid midstream or go up too late. Um, then we had people just like going AFK. Like it was just like every pug issue you could normally run into, we started to run into, yeah. Um, which was unfortunate. And, uh, so I ended up running another one after that. And that one went much smooth, much more smoothly, which was good to get that all done and wrapped up. Uh, we ended up finishing that Halls of Valor though, that ran all the pug issues with four of us <laughs> doing it because, you know, you might as well finish oh, as no. that one person is just standing there, you know, not doing anything as they walked away from the computer. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, it was interesting. Um, you know, I don't know what to expect when pugs, this stuff happens. Sometimes you have really good ones and you meet great people and stuff goes really well and everyone's really happy and cheery and appreciative of each other. And other times you have keys like this. So, you know, it's different ends of the spectrum. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
But it means that uh, what I got actually for my vault reward this week was my tier legs. So I actually now have my full tier set, which is kind of neat on the druid. That was just, I lucked into it through that. Um, so that was a nice way to go. Uh, since I hadn't been putting any effort into obviously doing a lot of grinding of group content to be able to then get the Catalyst online every week and have a ton of Catalyst charges saved up over the span of this past chunk of time. Um, it meant that I obviously was just acquiring gear as I went. Uh, and the break that I took for this first season was and a literal break. I literally was like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to push a lot of content as far as uh, end game and group content goes. So it's been good to have that time off to uh, sort of recoup a little bit of my WoW desire to play the game because i i was thinking about this morning i'm like man shadowlands really burned me out on wow end game content like not on wow in general like mm -hmm. i still really love the game i still totally support people playing it i still think there's a lot of really good things about it and the teams that make it are great and um i enjoy the story and i enjoy the the stuff they put together for it and the new mythic plus seasons and all this sort of stuff has hype to it that i you know definitely feel but I will say that Shadowlands kind of tampered down my desire to regularly, every single week, get together and push content um, inside World of Warcraft. It just it it just made that difficult for me. So I am getting back to a place where I want to do that again, which is now a work schedule limitation in a much bigger way. Uh, so it's when that work limitation gives, like I guess, gives a bit, gives me a little bit more space. Uh, that's when I'll probably look at hopping back into team stuff. Um, there was a team that actually offered me a spot recently that does mythic content that does six hours a week, which actually sounds amazing, um, that I would love to get into. Unfortunately, I work one of the nights that currently that uh, they get together to, to raid, so that obviously does not work. So I'm trying to see if I can shift things and make that happen, because it would be nice to get back into some regular raid time every now and then. But yeah, it's uh, it's been a weird season to sort of have my like break season, if you will, because so many people are so hyped about the game and enjoying it and enjoying the content and everything else. And so as I sort of dove in towards the end of it here to get into that content, you sort of experience these things a little bit later on that people have been talking about for a while and and uh, can really revel in it and enjoy it. So uh, I appreciate um, people being patient with my lack of wow time that I've been putting in of late. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back there soon. Speaking of wow time and things in wow, uh, with the new chunk of content coming up here on uh, May 2nd, uh, this, that's going to be happening here with the N Embers of Naltharian. I have to mention this specifically as part of this whole deal. We are giving away Fireplume Regalia Transmog. Uh, the WoW team was kind enough uh, to let us give away a Fireplume Regalia Transmog. Um, and hashtag WoW partner, hashtag Dragonflight. I'll throw those inside our tweet for all this. Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's going to be happening. These keys are going to be usable in North America, South America, and Oceanic regions. So unfortunately not the EU areas for those of our listeners, but uh, if you want to uh, get yourself Fireplume Regalia, you will need to either tweet at the starting zone uh, or you can email us at the starting zone at gmail.com with your ugliest transmog you possibly can put together. Give us the ugliest thing you can create and tweet it at us or email us and we'll uh, put you in the run-in for it and make sure keys get out to you. If you are... Submitting through Twitter, just be sure you're following so that we can actually DM you. Um, that happens a lot as a limitation with giveaways where people don't follow. They just tweet and then we can't do anything about it because we can't DM you with it. Um, so be sure you're you're doing the, the following and, the, and allowing us to actually DM you so you can get your code if you win. All right. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I was like just, stuff away. You have to prove to us that you need a new outfit. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. Thanks to the WoW team for uh, you know giving us some some giveaway stuff. So I'm looking for like normally when we when we have like we haven't done one in a while, but when we do like screenshot stuff, man, we we've gotten some really great stuff over the years from yeah. from our audience with with this. So this was something that struck me since they were doing a, a transmod giveaway. I was like, hmm, okay, well, why would you why would you need a new outfit? Well, it would be because like you can't dress yourself. You know, that would uh, be committing fashion crimes and, you know, you need a new outfit. You like need a, your TSZ mom to give you an outfit so you can yeah, look right. cool yeah, with all exactly. the other kids. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Send them over. We want to see them and, and um, you know, we'll get uh, we'll get the, the winter situation sorted out right before patch. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be doing it probably Monday is when we'll uh, get all that sorted and given out so you can have something rolling into next week. All right. With that, let's hop into what's going on this week in World of Warcraft.
All right, this is the Burning Crusade Time Walking Week this week, where the sign of the Twisting Nether buff is up, increasing reputation gains from Burning Crusade uh, by 50% from combat and quests. And, of course, you can go and run Blood Furnace, Botanica, Magister's Terrace, Mana Tombs, Shattered Halls, or Underbog uh, to get yourself some 359 eye level, or uh, obviously the vendor's selling 346 stuff. Uh, and, of course, there's a quest to complete five of these, which gets you a heroic Vault of Incarnates gear box. Um, this will be obviously the last week that this whole event is going on, so be sure that you are trying to, uh, you know, get all the gear you can if this is something that you're, you've been taking advantage of. I have every week, which has been nice, just getting that extra piece of gear every week. Uh, although I've gotten weapons twice, and one of them was from an end boss, and one of them wasn't, which meant that it was a higher item level than the other one, so kind of had like a null week one of those weeks, but, it, you know, it, it works, it works, you know, it, I, I still appreciate the chance getting something cool, which is always nice. Um, and of course, there's also Black Temple time walking going on, where groups of 10 to 30 players uh, can get some 389 eye level gear from uh, going to, you know, grouping up and going to Black Temple and, and doing some time walking. Uh, there's also the uh, gla the War Glaives of Azanoth Transmog that you can unlock if you already have the actual glaives themselves and you go and you kill Illidan in time walking. You can then use those glaives as a transmog over your other glaives. So uh, if you uh, if you want to unlock that, maybe see about getting a group of nine friends together or more. Uh, it's obviously easier with more players uh, to do this. So be sure that you're taking advantage when you can. Yeah, I can't believe that uh, Turbulent Timeways is over already. That I went know. really fast. Yeah. Uh, I barely even did any of it, ultimately. Um, this week is really good, though, because with the exception of, like, Botanica and maybe Magister's Terrace, like, these are all pretty quick, simple runs. These are very old dungeons, so, um, you know, they're pretty straightforward compared to modern content. Um, some really good dungeons in here. I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage them. I, I, I like a lot of these dungeons in, the, in this current pool. But, um, yeah, really good week for, like, leveling 60 to 70, especially if you can, you know, tank or something, get, like, really quick cues for it. Um, it's it's really a great – it's like every – it's like a level every three time-walking dungeons, give or take, and the time-walking dungeons take about 10 minutes apiece. So if you're not burning a lot of time in queue, it's great for leveling. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the payoff with the, the heroic item is really good if you get a fresh – 70 or if you've been away for a while or never really kind of kitted out in season one just to get something to, to get you into season two um it's great i i mean it sucks that this event is like over already because i really i only did it like the first two weeks on a couple tunes and i just haven't had time to yeah to do it on anybody else and i don't know if i'll have time to do it this week either uh it does kind of make me wish that there was just time walking every week not, I can understand not having the heroic reward <laughs> with heroic, heroic rewards every reward. week. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like you know, I, I understand why you know we don't. They wouldn't maybe do that, but like, man, I feel like having time walking and another event every week is really yeah. good. I, yeah. I, I feel like that's a thing you could just do. Yeah, agree. I mean, maybe maybe from a design standpoint, that devalues current content, current expansion content too much, and that's why they don't want to do it that way. But. I mean, we have so many time walking events, and you have to imagine that like BFA time walking is going to be introduced in like ten dot two, probably. You know, like we're going to add another one to the pool in another patch or so here. Like that's a really that ends up being a really long rotation, and when you only see one every three weeks or whatever. So I don't know. Not not All the right. first time I, I've I've brought it up on TSE, and probably won't be the last. That weekly time walking is actually good. So, so yeah, so there's, there's two pieces here. First of all, I, I have to address with Burning Crusade Time Walking, I'm a Mechagar, a Mechagar fan. I, I would much rather have that than have Botanica. Like, just putting that out there. Mechanar was a much better oh, yeah. dungeon I mean, to run than Botanica was. It um, also would be super, super fast. It would be walking. super fast at Time Walking, which would be amazing. Everyone would want it. And second of all, you mentioned BFA Time Walking. So... Which time walking dungeons do we get from? Like, what's your number one pick for BFA dungeons to come back as time walking? I mean, other uh, than Freehold. Freehold, like Freehold's going to be number uh, one for everybody. Like, come on now. Um, uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. You don't Freehold know? was my favorite one by a wide margin. <laughs> what? I know, right? It's just it, it has to be right. If they didn't do time walking yeah. Freehold, like I mean, it has to be like, there. Like the other ones were were good. I mean, there was good dungeons in that expansion. Um, 
I could live without Siege of Borealis. Let's keep that out of the okay. Out of the, I, and and I'll yeah. I'll take Shrine of the Storms out. I'll take that one out because I don't want that. Okay. One there. All right. Yeah. Um, if we if we could yeah. like do picks bans, like let's yeah. just let's just ban out <laughs> um, Siege of Borealis. Nobody. I don't think anybody wants to do that. It's a time walking dungeon. Mm, mm. Um, all right. So that that would that, I, I that, that would leave okay. us. Yeah, we'd have Atal Dazar, Mother Load, King's Rest, Temple of Sultharalis, Underrot, Waycrest Manor, and Toldegore is what we'd end up with then. Yeah, I don't think I think it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple good ones in there. Um, I think Underrot and Waycrest Manor are ones I'd actually really look forward to. Although we'll find out with Underrot since it's about to be, you know, (laughs) Mythic Plus stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. We're gonna. I mean, we will be back in Underrot and Freehold soon, one way or the other. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Tall Desar would be a really good time walking. I agree for sure. That's not. Yeah, that'd be really fun. Yeah. All right, weekly event. Other one going on this week is Battleground bonus event where the signs of battle buff is up, which means if you uh, participate in a battleground you get 50 percent more honor from wins and kills uh, or objectives sorry not kills uh wins and objectives and uh if you win four of them you get yourself some marks of honor and conquest as well uh you got aiding the accord this week where you got to earn your 3k rep you have uh the nook who defensive and uh as your vault as your dungeon quests and then your random bg and solo shuffle for your pvp quests and the brawl for this week is the temple of hot magu Probably my favorite of the brawls overall because it's just absolute crazy silliness. Uh, basically, you it's, it's hot potato with the orb inside of Temple of Cot Magoo. You go in there, there's two orbs. Uh, you can throw them between you and your friends. The res timer is only five seconds, so you pop up very quickly if you do die. Uh, it's just crazy run around, have fun, brawlness. I really enjoy uh, Temple of Cot Magoo. It's, it's the one that I... Uh, played with Bajira a lot when we were doing BFA PvP. Like, every time this was up, we would, like, every day be in there running Temple of Hot Magoo. It was a good time. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's a good one. It's just the, the pace is so high, and that's always... I feel like that's always fun, you know? that You don't want to be just dead waiting for respawns or whatever, or just waiting for something to happen. And you don't have that on Hot Magoo. No. Um Pretty good week overall if you are into doing uh, Battlegrounds. A lot of bang for your buck this week with the BG bonus event, the random BGs quest, you know. And also solo shuffle being other quests. Like if you're if you're just like not into doing organized PvP, you can just push a button and play PvP this week and get you know, all that stuff done. Yeah. The, the event quest and and then two of the weekly quests. That's uh that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Uh, World Boss this week is listing off the Future Bane, the big ice proto-dragon in Daldrassus, dropping some 395 loot for you if you're looking for some of that. Uh, Mythic Plus affixes are tyrannical, bolstering, and volcanic, meaning bosses have more health and deal increased damage. When slain any non- and, sorry, non-boss enemies uh, have a death cry that empowers their nearby allies, increasing their maximum health and damage. And while in combat, enemies periodically cause gouts of flame to erupt beneath the feet of distant players. So, I mean, this is actually probably the best tyrannical week we could look for going into the end of the season. After last week's terrible fortified week, at least we're getting an okay tyrannical week. Yes, bolstering makes trash kind of meh uh, to get through, but at least it's not a fortified bolstering week. And it's not a fortified bolstering week that has something else that adds to it, uh, like necrotic or something like that. Uh, that's going to then cause even more issues for your squad when you're in there. Volcanic, you can just step out of, and if you only bring one ranged, if your healer is the only ranged inside your group, they're the only one who really has to deal with Volcanics as far as dodging stuff goes. I think this is a pretty good Tyrannical week to sort of end off on. Yes, bolstering, you know, makes things a little bit spicy on trash, but it's nothing that, you know, you can't handle with a, an organized group or, you know, even inside a pug, you can still sort of deal with bolstering. Uh, since it does wear off after a period of time. So, you know, if you do bolster something really big into a boss, you can sort of just stay away from it for a bit. Ideally, you're, you know, actually cleaving stuff down all evenly and killing it all at the same time. Um, Or you're in a situation where you're killing that one really, really bad mob first, and then everything just gets one stack of bolster, which is 15% more health, which isn't terrible uh, in most situations uh, for your team to sort of work through. Um... And then tyrannical's tyrannical. I mean, if you if you need to get tyrannical keys done, this is your last week to do it. So get in there and get some tyrannical keys done. You know, that's that's going to be the big tip of the week, I guess. Yep. Um, you will have that off season week to do like rating based achievements and whatnot, portal unlocks, etc., teleport unlocks, I should say. That's fourth. Um, but this is your last week for um, if you're trying to get the end of season rating based title. Uh, they will close after this week. So keep that in mind. 
but yeah, overall, I mean, I, I think this is a really good tyrannical week. I, I feel like overall this season, tyrannical weeks have generally been a little bit harder. I, there's a lot going on with these bosses in this pool and um, with the way that thundering kind of functions, you know, it creates this other layer of uh, area denial and positioning requirements on top of all this stuff that the bosses are also doing, which, you know, these are the tools that they have to put on bosses is stuff like positioning requirements, right? Like that's, the, you know, these are the things we do when we fight bosses. So I feel like tyrannical weeks have been just like a bit harder overall this season anyway, but yeah, there's like, there's like almost no crossover here. Like, yes, volcanic will happen during boss fights, but volcanic is not really a super disruptive or high impact yeah. FX. Like it's, it's pretty manageable and like bolster shouldn't be an issue. So yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a good week to, to, you know, send the season out on for, for tyrannical. Um, you're just, you know, trash should be easy this week. You should be, it, it, this is the kind of week where that we, we kind of talk about like wanting to have where it's like, okay, Trash is manageable when you're when you're you know pulling trash like you know you can pull big if you want to you can chain pull uh, I mean bolstering sucks for that but like yeah. it's possible to do um, it's not I mean bolstering I feel like is so much less punishing first of all on a on a tyrannical week and second of all since they put a duration on it and it's like okay well unless you were gonna kill that thing you know within the, the amount of time that bolstering lasts, then does it really matter if you have that extra health on it or not? Like uh, that might be debatable. So, you know, overall, yeah. If you, if you need some, some last minute tyrannical stuff, or if you're pushing for, you know, I don't know that rating uh, threshold or a teleport or something. I mean, really, this doesn't seem like, like a bad week uh, based on the combo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think overall this is going to be a good week for a lot of people to push keys. Other stuff going on this week. On Friday, we have Volunteer Guard Day. It's the 28th uh, of uh, April that this is going on. So this is the you can go into one of your major cities. You can do a slash salute at one of the guards. And you'll get yourself your own little like transformation guard appearance. And you can sort of roll around protecting your city. And as you sort of defeat the AI or, in some cases, player, invaders of the city, you can earn titles. Uh, all the way up to being the mythic defender of that city. Um, the title is obviously temporary as part of the event, but if you're looking for something to sort of do for kicks, this is certainly something you can choose to do. Uh, not the most uh, sort of crazy, big, cool micro holiday, but it is probably the epitome of what a micro holiday is. It's a one time, one day, you get limited benefit for that day event. Yeah, it's cool. You know, it's I mean, there's not a lot to it, but it's kind of fun to do. If you if you've never done it, it's it's probably worth doing it once just to see what it's like. And if you happen to be online that day and you know, killing time or whatever, it's it's not a bad thing to do. It's it's kind of fun. Yeah. And also, there uh, you do get um, progress for your uh, your traveler's log for the yeah. month if you haven't maxed it out yet. Like, mm -hmm. has some easy progress on that. And we are coming down the last couple days of the month here, so keep that in mind regarding finishing up your traveler's log and or freezing you know, stuff either away buying or freezing stuff yeah. Yeah, on the, on the trading post. Cause yep. it's almost time for the rollover. So volunteer guard day coming in to, to, you know, save the day here at the end of the month. If you need a couple more points on the log. Yeah. And speaking of the log, uh, next week on the first of May is when children's week kicks off. So when the log rolls over, I assume it, it's, I don't know if it rolls over on the actual first of the month or the first reset of the month. I can't remember which it's one. It's the first it of the month. It's the first yeah. of the month. Okay. It should be the, first, so. the calendar, yeah. Yeah, so then in that case, Children's Week, which if you want to hop into doing that, you'll obviously get more log progress for doing Children's Week, uh, which is going to be kicking off on the first. We'll let you know if there's anything new that's actually coming out once it's actually up and running. So on next week's show, we'll talk a bit about Children's Week and whether or not there's anything new reward-wise. But otherwise, it's basically, you know, going and getting your orphan and showing them around and getting them a balloon and getting them ice cream and all sorts of fun stuff to make sure that they have a really good day and well, good week, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And they added a bunch of stuff in BFA that is really good yeah. um, as well. They, 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 they did kind of a, I don't know if I would call it a rework, but they, they expanded the holiday quite a bit in, in BFA and added a bunch of stuff there that I highly recommend. So 
yeah, we'll talk more about it next week. I don't expect there's anything new this year, but I, we don't know for sure. But um, I do feel like there's probably a lot of people who missed out on the stuff they added in BFA, which is definitely worth a look. It's just kind of bad timing. I mean, I guess if you're doing it on Monday, then yeah, it, once new patch is out, you might have other priorities. Although it's not like we're getting the season roll. We don't have any new, you know, end game content to do. So once you kind of chew through the opening week patch stuff, then, you know, maybe it's time to, to go do that. Yeah. Uh, as far as the raid goes and raid schedule goes for Aberus the Shadow Crucible, the new raid coming in 10.1. Uh, this is, uh, we, got, we got our official blog post. We got the raid schedule blog post for everybody. And we found out that the week of uh, the 8th of May is when Normal, Heroic, Mythic, and Raid Finder Wing 1 all release apparently so uh you know not not only raid finder wing one but raid finder wing one with i believe four bosses in it um quite the heavy wing for people to sort of jump in because they're doing four bosses in the first wing they're doing three bosses and sorry actually it's four bosses in the second and then that's one boss in the third and then one boss in the fourth is that what i'm seeing here i think that's what i'm seeing here um yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's three, and then four, and then one, and then one. Um, yeah. This is, I mean, I think, is this the first time since Dragon Soul, which is when Raid Finder was introduced, that Raid Finder launches at the same time as, like, normal? I, I think it, so. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's been a really long time. Um, I, yeah, I, I guess I, I have sort of a bigger philosophical problem with mythic coming out at the same time as everything else than with raid finder coming out at the same time as everything else <laughs> like the gap week for lfr has seemed kind of weirdly punishing for no great reason like i don't know what the rationale was for holding raid finder back a, a week like i i don't i just don't know um mythic i think there are good reasons to to hold it back and i think that people you know I mean, I mean, listen to what the the racers, the world first teams have to say about it. Like, it's not like they like it. They they didn't want it this way. So I, that's something to consider. Um, I do like the fact that there's going to be separate wings for like like the last boss just being its own wing. And so, um, I, so I, I, the correction here is that it's actually three three two one is what we actually have. Mm hmm. So everyone is, is aware. I, I went through and redid all of the math. And whenever they release mm -hmm. these things, they often have names that are like name, comma, name of name. And you're like, okay, is that, that okay, that's a full title. All right, I get it now. That's where I, I missed that little piece of the puzzle there. But yes, it's, uh, it's right. three bosses, three bosses, then two bosses, one boss. Uh, so, I mean, you, you would expect that, you know, you have higher item level stuff on the later bosses, right? Yep. So. That's kind of cool because you could do these shorter wings to kind of focus in on potentially like the good loot, right? Like you're not, you would imagine that, you know, wing three and four are going to have the more desirable stuff that people are trying to chase. So if you just like queuing up just to do, you know, two bosses or whatever, that's, that seems pretty good actually. Um, you know, since you have that sort of graduating item level and yeah. They're, they're trying to lean more into doing custom items in Raid that have cool effects or that are desirable for some reason other than just their raw stats, which I think they need to do. So, I mean, that's, I think that's pretty cool from a Raid Finder perspective is to have a couple smaller wings and, and to start releasing the wings earlier. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be weird to have the... Nice. It's going to be weird to have the entire Raid of Raid Finder out by June 19th. That's when the last wing comes out. Like, so it, it's launching at the beginning of May and by mid-June, it's all available. Sorry, I had to sneeze there. Um, it's all available, which sounds crazy to me that uh, we're actually going to have the whole Raid Finder raid experience on like midway through June, which means you're like, okay, so if this the this is becoming stale clock starts when the last week of Raid Finder comes out, right? How many weeks before they have to release more content if they're going to be doing that? Like they, they're getting the whole raid out within the first month. Uh, then it means that for everybody who wants to accept, who have access uh, to have access to it. So... Does it mean that we're going to essentially have two or three, like maybe three months after that is when we're looking directly at the next chunk of stuff, three or four months after that tops? Like, man. Something like that. I mean, you got to think that 10.1.5 will be pretty close on the heels of like probably the last week of Raid Finder here, right? Like something like that. I yeah. mean, the way they've been going, man, it's just yeah. like 
we'll probably we'll realistically we'll probably see 10.1.5 ptr by like what the week of like may 16th something like that somewhere. yeah you know I'm like sure. yeah, yeah if that if that's what they're doing so um yeah i mean normally the the end of the lfr rollout sort of marks like okay this patch content is complete now and now you know the next thing is going to spin yeah. up so yeah um but it means yeah, we're looking we're at 10.2 in like at October, November, you know, is when we're going to be yeah, seeing probably this. Probably something you know. like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping kind of November. Yeah, I, I, I don't really like the five month season. Let's let's keep it like six, you know, six ish months for a season. Give, yeah. give it a little room to breathe. Um, but yeah, I mean, like obviously, the pace is really high right now. I hope they can maintain it. Uh, you know, that's I just going I just, back to what we were talking about at the top of the show. It's yeah. like with the brain drain and everything. It's like. I can. I mean, the pace is really ambitious for Dragonflight. Can they? Are they going to be able to keep it up throughout the life of the expansion? And I, you know, I guess we'll see. I, but, I just, um, I just want to be sure that whatever we're waiting for next at the end of Dragonflight isn't fourteen months away, <laughs> right? I don't want to be in the last patch, yeah. or or we just create a season four kind of situation again, where it's like, well, we were in season three for five months. Well, now we're going to be in season four for seven months, and season four is the the remash that we did at the end of Shadowlands only with Dragonflight content. Um, I don't want that again. That's really what kills a lot of the the game time. So mm -hmm. uh, this this is where I worry about this kind of pacing is I'd rather be in these seasons for six or seven months and have a six or seven month last season before the new content comes out than be in these seasons for five months and then have a 12 month season at the <laughs> end of the, you know, like I don't want that, Yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, we've we've dodged that the really egregious examples of that recently. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, yeah, like it's it's a tough call, right? Because you want momentum and stuff as an expansion's rolling out. You want, you know, you want new stuff to do. You want support for the expansion, but then you also want the next expansion once it's all done. And I wonder if they'll do. I mean, it seems like we might be on track here for four four tiers in dragonflight right if we get i mean we got the second tier in two weeks and then we'll all we'll almost certainly have the third tier before the end of the year yeah and then we're probably about a year out from the next expansion so you would hope that there's one more season roll in there and then that lines up pretty nicely um if they're not gonna do that then i would be okay with like a a season four type thing like they did in in shadowlands where it just gets a bit wacky, but I think maybe just make it wackier. I don't think it was wacky enough, ultimately. Um, I, I liked it for what it was, but I feel like if if you're going to do this kind of victory lap season, like you could push it a little bit more into the wackiness for, for players just to keep people interested until the new stuff comes out. So I, I we'll just, see. We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, but like yeah. this is, you know, I think it's a reasonable thing to think about. We're looking at, you know, the schedule for this middle patch here. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is whatever season four ends up being, if there is one that's like that, that's wacky is it doesn't feel like progression again. Um, it needs to be fun. It, it can't feel like a grind. It, it needs to feel fun. So that's what they failed with for Shadowlands, in my opinion, is that it really was just like, oh, great, we have to progress these bosses again, which was not like riveting content to go back. And yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like easy. And, you know, the, yeah. the wrinkles actually made it harder in a lot yeah. of ways at first. And yeah, yeah. It, it did. Yeah, it didn't yeah. feel great. But yeah, I mean, I would love it if we get if we get Aberus and two more raids after that. I think that would be yeah. that'd be great for this expansion. Yeah. So, why that's kind of the exciting thing about the the structure of this expansion is like you know that as soon as this patch comes out, we're just gonna be like on to the next thing. And you know that it's been a while since we we had an expansion where we felt that way. Yeah. Uh, for those who are curious, the title that you earn for clearing the mythic raid of Aberus the Shadow Crucible is Heir to the Void, which I think is a pretty cool title, actually. It's one of the cooler titles they've done. If you're someone who really is Void-centric or wants to make a Void-centric character, like a Void Elf, for example, that'd be a pretty cool title to have. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Okay, uh, Conqueror, the challenges of Dragonflight Season 2 are going to be kicking off on May 9th. Um, basically, they went in and updated this information 
uh, last week, and they said Dragonflight Season 2 is coming, bringing a new raid, an update rotation of Mythic Plus Dungeons, a new PvP season. The season will also feature familiar exclusive rewards, such as the Head of the Curve and Cutting Edge achievements for the raid, Keystone Master achievements, rewards for Mythic Plus, and the Gladiators rewards for PvP. Uh, basically, what we have going on is the Keystone, the, the, there'll be a Keystone you know, achievement that you expect there to be. Uh, the heroic raid is going to have the draconic mark of mastery and bring Norsco the proud at the obsidian rest in uh, Zerlek Cavern to receive powerful equipment for your efforts. So basically, you get these marks of mastery and you bring them to this dude inside the caverns, and he gives you some equipment as a reward. Um, apparently, they say there's yeah, this a is the uh, it's the heroic set item, right? Yeah, that they yeah. talked about before. Th- this is yeah. Um... Which is cool, but again, it's the thing of like, okay, well, you've already cleared the heroic raid, and now you get a heroic set item? Like, okay, thanks. Yeah, and apparently you can only earn one of these marks of mastery per character during Season 2 through the achievement of actually clearing the raid that way. So um, that's something to keep in mind. I don't... I mean, it's an achievement, so I don't know why you'd think you could earn more of them, because you're only doing the achievement once, because it only unlocks once. But hey, look, they clarified. I appreciate them right. giving me more information than less. I, you know, I gotta say. Uh, and then as far as Mythic goes, you get the Obsidian uh, a Spectral Earthstone, um, which uh, these Earthstones infuse your armor, unlocking additional visual effects for certain Aberus of the Shadow Crucible class set appearances. And this effect is account wide, so obviously that's coming back as well for completing either uh, Keystone he- uh, Hero Season 2 or the uh, Dragonflight Season 2 or Killing Mythic Scalemander Sakurath. So, yeah. That's the uh, that's the new stuff coming in for Dragonflight Season 2 for challenges. If you're looking to actually earn some stuff, you can actually earn some stuff. Which, you know, we just... Yeah, got. I'm glad they, they spelled this out a little bit yeah. more. Because, um, like, the... Uh, the reward for the equivalent in season one for, you know, se- season two hero was it was not obvious what was going on there or what we we're supposed to expect out of it. Like we figured yeah. it out, but the communication around that was a bit weird. But yeah, uh, so, you know, that that's kind of the the season two hero is similar to what we have um, here in season one for Keystone Hero and what have you. And then, yeah, I mean, it's it's a nice addition for for season two master, I guess. I just. I feel like it really extremely benefits like very high level players and probably doesn't do much for most other people. Um, by the time you complete this, you probably don't need the reward for it. You know, if, unless you're a player that it, you know, you, you transcend the limitations of your gear and, and you play with people who are also in that band, then like, yeah, okay. Maybe you can get Keystone master done super early before you have like full heroic, you know, tier items, or right. maybe you can clear the heroic raid without it. But um, for a lot of people, it's really, it'll be like a transmog piece at best, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I, I think it's always nice to have these rewards spelled out. I'm just going to go with that, with that aspect that you've you highlighted, because I think that's the best way to go. Uh, the next bit here we're going to talk about is the PTR development notes, which class balance wise now feels like it's like a stock ticker where it's like, unholy Death Knight stock is up. All the damage got buffed, but don't All worry. Right. Those balanced druids, their stock's down. They got nerfed. And then, you know, mage's stock is up because arcane, fire, and frost all got buffed. Um, You sort of work your way through uh, these notes, and it's kind of hilarious to see. Like, elemental shamans got buffed. All the mage specs got buffed. Um, Holy priest got tweaked, I would say, a little bit. Like, some cases buffed. Some things adjusted. Uh, Like I said, balanced druids did, in fact, get nerfed. Um, Havoc DHs got adjusted. Unholy death knights got buffed. Um, so they're still tweaking around classes, but since we're going into release stuff next week, I guess this is where they're honing in a bit more and going, yeah, we probably overdid this a little bit. Ah, we, this still needs to be a bit of, a bit of adjustment next week. I expect to be the last pass of a lot of this tuning before obviously all the raid stuff kicks off and they'll leave it alone for at least a week or so. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's two weeks before we see some more stuff change in there, but, uh, stuff is getting settled. If you're wanting to see what your class is going to feel like next week, it's a pretty good bet. You could pop onto the ptr this week and go hey this is what my class is going to feel like and i can set up all my bars and i can go in and you know put all my spells on all my bars and make sure i have all my macros set up and if i have weak auras i want to build i can work on those and all that stuff can get built now if that's something you want to do so if you want to take the time to do that this week if you're sort of feeling like there's a lull in your game time um yeah certainly a, a nice way to roll into next week feeling much more prepared is getting your edit mode and all of your, you know, talent specs and everything like that set up on PTR, saved, and then just import them all again 
when uh, the patch goes live on Tuesday. So you can take the time to get ready if that's something you want to do. Yep. I mean, I think there were some probably much needed changes here to mages. Um, yeah. Uh, mages have just been not where really I think anybody expects them to be. Um, pretty much all of season one. I mean, I only have one guy maining a mage at this point and he mains mage all the time and he's usually like a pretty decent performer but he's you know he's been struggling for most of the season and um these are welcome changes i don't know you know none of the stuff is final and it's not going to stay this way i don't know if this is enough on its face but um yeah you know this is kind of the I mean, I mean, it was definitely a big round of, of, of balancing um, that hit PTR last week. But this is one of the issues with not having that heroic week and having Mythic launch like right away. Um, you know, it, it, it does create more of a, of a lag time for dialing in balance as best they can, right? Like... You don't have as much data. People are hitting mythic bosses right away, and maybe they don't even really have the tools they need to clear numbers checks and stuff because tuning just isn't right. Um, it's tough. It's you know, it's it's a, I feel like it's a tough situation that the devs are putting themselves in because they could just say like mythic comes out week two, like see you then, and everybody would go okay, yeah, mythic comes out week two, of course. Um, so we'll see. I, you know, there's going to be. As, as we saw in season one, like balance is just ongoing and forever now. Now with the talent system, like stuff is always getting rebalanced. Knobs are always getting twisted. Like it's just, it's not going to end. It's, it's not going to be like, okay, well, this is what they locked in to ship the patch. See you next patch. Like that's not happening. Um, I suspect that there's going to be, you know, a huge tuning pass after, you know, the first week and and going forward as well so um yeah it's you know it's just the state of the game in in the in the dragonflight era it's like you know tuning changes are just never ending and i mean i guess why not if you you have all these different abilities that you can tweak and you can you can adjust so why not do i leave it sit there um so it's good to see, but yeah, this is this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as um, yeah. season two balancing is going to go. Yeah, and I expect, you know, obviously next week there probably will be some tweaks. And then I think when we hit that first week, the majority of tuning we'll see was probably directed at bosses, is my guess. And we'll see some probably tier set bonuses tweaked a little bit. Uh, but I think class-wise, we won't see a lot of balancing until the week after. I think it'll be the second week of, uh, of season two that we actually see the class balancing pass happen. Um it's going to be really interesting with LFR launching that first week because that means that first week for a lot of players, uh, they'll all be have something to do. Um, the casual player, I, I can understand them wanting to do LFR this way because the casual player uh, essentially has the the you know off season week where the hype is kind of like, hey, get in there and play World of Warcraft, and they get in there like, well, there's story stuff to do, so this is kind of neat. I'm kind of having fun. And the second week, everyone's like, hey, it's Raid. Everyone's going to be doing Raid. And you're like, but I don't have a Raid that I can go to. Whereas now you have LFR. So now you, you can be a part of that hype cycle. And while you watch, you know, these really high-end teams work and smash out these bosses, you can be doing your LFR and doing the same thing, playing along, you know? Like, that's that's cool. So I, I dig that LFR shifted this way. I don't think it affects the high-end teams at all because they're all outgeared that content entirely. And I guess there might be some who go, oh, I have to go if there's a tier, you know, set piece off of the last boss in LFR. But those teams could queue as a, as a group for an LFR and do it in like 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if the like, concern is like, well, we have to do LFR because we get a tier piece from it. Like, all yeah. right, yeah, just queue. Like, you're not going to fail. Just blast it out and, yeah. you know, see what happens. Exactly. So I, I, I don't feel like there's a negative spin on this at all. Uh, which I like a lot, so I'm uh, I'm down for it. I, I often, when they did the thing of like, well, heroic, normal, and mythic are all going to launch at the same time. I was like, well, that's a lot more time and different scheduling that these teams have to figure out. But LFR is like a non-factor in that, so I'm uh, I'm pleased with uh, with this decision. I think it's a good decision to go with. Uh, but with that, uh, I guess we are going to, uh, you know, start wrapping up this episode. Uh, we want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of our patrons. 
Our Patreon is live over at patreon.com slash the starting zone. And I'd like to take a moment to thank some specific patrons today for what they contribute to the show. And all of our patrons help out our show and help to improve the content we create. But today I'm going to give a special shout out to Arajian, Celian, Kapawi, Max, and Choral. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate everything that everyone gives to the show. Um, but uh, you five are, you know, giving us at that higher level and we appreciate it very much. Um, so yeah, thank you patrons. Uh, no new patrons this week, but we'll have to see what's going on next week on the show. Absolutely. Thank you patrons for your support. I mean, the support of the show over the years has been incredible and it does mean a lot to us and helps us, you know, keep the, uh, keep the show on, on the track and, you know, get you an episode on a weekly basis. So it, it means a lot. It, it helps us out immensely. So, so thank you all for that. And, um, yeah, I mean, next week, I guess we'll just be diving headfirst into, uh, you know, 10.1 patch notes and maybe early impressions if we get a chance to play if servers function on Tuesday. I have a feeling that uh, a cross a cross faction guilds may result in yeah. some technical difficulties early on next week. So we'll see. It's going to be weird. And I, 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 for some reason, I feel like there's going to be something where like, a raid team outside of raid has 16 people in it and they zone into the raid and then everyone of one faction like gets hearthstoned out because they're not part of the group or something like i feel like that's gonna happen i don't know why that's just like my my like i, I just i feel like it's gonna happen it's it's my my guess i guess of what could go wrong so we'll find out we'll see <laughs> but uh yeah i think uh, i think that could be a, a spicy patch for them to release is the uh the cross from guild stuff all right folks if you enjoyed listening to this episode of the starting zone um another way to support the show is to head on over to your itunes your apple podcast leave us a five-star review they really help out our show they boost us up those charts they help the episode get rated better which is also really nice too um because yeah it lets more people find us speaking of which uh we got a review here from anunas uh, 55 in the US, uh, entitled New Listener. So it's great show. Listen to the first time on April 18th. 10 of 10 would recommend. So like new listener right there. Thank you so much. Taking the time, leaving us the review. We really like, it totally helps us out. And I really liked the episode on the 18th as well. I think we did a really good job on that episode. So yeah, I appreciate the, that was the one you happened to tune into. <laughs> yeah. Once in a while, you know, we're bound to have a good one. Um, but no, in all seriousness, uh, yeah, thank you for writing in. Uh, thank you for taking the time. It, it, it means a lot and great to hear from you and glad to have you. Welcome aboard. It, it's uh, sometimes it's a little, I you know, it's a little surprising to me when we hear from people like, oh, I just started listening to the show. I just found you guys. And it's like, we've been doing this for so long, you know, <laughs> um, you sort of like, you, you tend to forget that like, yeah, every episode might be somebody's first time listening or yeah. something. And it really is a case. And I feel, I feel like it parallels kind of the game, you know, the sort of the myth of the, fa that there are no new wow players and like, there's not a lot of new players, but there are some, you know, and it does happen. And we do hear from new players sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so the, the the myth of the there are no new TSC listeners is also, uh, you know, debunked here. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, uh, and thanks for writing in. And, um, I yeah, glad you could uh, check in with us. Yeah. That's going to wrap up episode 575 of The Starting Zone. If you want to go to show notes for this episode or leave us a comment on the show, you can go on over to thestartingzone.com, the official website for The Starting Zone podcast. If you want to contact the show and ask us, uh, sorry, ask us your feedback, leave us your feedback, or ask us a question, you can email us at thestartingzone at gmail.com or reach out to us on Twitter, or you can find us over at thestartingzone.com slash Discord if you want to hop into our Discord and leave us some, uh, some questions or feedback or just participate with the community. Um, or if you're a postal worker and you'd like to join the postal worker group that exists there, feel free to join the TSZ listener postal group that we have that uh, we all appreciate those workers. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and I, I like that they flocked here. I think it's wonderful. They try to start their own raid team. Get in on it. Yeah, really. Just, you know, go for, grab the uh, brass ring there and yeah. make it happen. Yeah. If you want to get your hands on some TSE gear, you can find that over at T Public. That's T E E Public.com slash stores slash the starting zone. If you want to get, uh, you know, yourself some, uh, some more, you know, shirts and mugs and whatnot, you can find those all over there. And Jason, where can folks find you on the internet? Uh, best place to find me as always is over on Twitter. You can find me over there at Shieldwald. Um, so come say hi. And you can also find me streaming WoW over on twitch.tv slash shieldwald and youtube.com slash shieldwald. Uh, streams are still kind of on hiatus uh, because, you know, we've just really been winding down here. Um, just not a lot going on in the uh, 
in the WoW realm for me as season one draws to a close. But we'll be, you know, we'll be streaming uh, ten dot one stuff and season two stuff and all of that uh, next week for sure. And you know, I it sounds like uh, drops are coming back. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we'll we'll be uh, we'll be dishing out some drops next week for sure. Yeah. Uh, if you folks want to find me, you can find me over on Twitter at Spencer underscore Downey, over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Spencer HD, or over on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Spencer HD. And with that, for Jason and myself, we want to say thanks for listening and jobs done. <laughs>